Hi guys, it's David Fox from Fox Psychology and today I'm going to talk to you guys about The Sound Relationship House by Dr. John Gottman. And uh, how did he discover the secrets of a great relationship? Well, it goes back to the late 70s, early 80s where John had set up on campus uh, basically a purpose-built apartment and they got couples to come from all different walks of life and all different stages of their relationship. They might have been together for 20 years, they might have only been together for a year or a few months, they might be thinking of getting married and um, basically they would volunteer to come and hang out together as a couple for 24 hours in this apartment. However, this was not an ordinary apartment. There was two-way mirrors everywhere, um, everything was measured in including things like the couple's heart rate during a discussion with each other and that becomes important when you look at something the four horsemen which is another video I have done already um, so yeah definitely check out my youtube channel to find more videos in terms of relationships um, but in terms of what they discovered was they wanted to track couples over time and see if anything they saw in the lab could predict where the couples would still be together. Um, that's a lot of where the Four Horsemen work came from. But John also wanted to study what he called the masters, right? He had the masters, the disasters, and everybody in between. But he was looking at this group of couples that had come in and they're reporting, you know, it's 20 years later, or we've been together 30 years, and we're still genuinely really happy in our relationship. And he was like, what are they doing, these people? Why are there such anomalies um, out there? And unfortunately, that they kind of are when you look at the divorce rates. Um, there are not that many couples who would be in that category. But there was enough of them to study, that's for sure. And basically, John discovered what these building blocks were. And basically, that is what the Sound Relationship House shows you. So let me show you a visual of the Sound Relationship House, and I'll basically take you through it. So. That's the house, and as you can see, the pillars of your house are trust and commitment. So trust is not just, as I say to my couples, it's not just about are you being open with me and sharing your thoughts, your feelings, your plans. Trust also shows up very significantly as can I rely on you? Are you there for me? Do you have my back? And that can show up in many different ways during the course of a relationship. It might be were you there for me when I lost my job? Were you there for me when I was not well, mentally or physically? Were, did you stand up for me when your mother said that thing about me? Uh, did, you, did you have my back? And so if we feel that somebody doesn't have our back, that we can't rely on them, it erodes the trust. So that's another element of trust that shows up. Very often when I'm working with couples and I, in the first session and I start showing them that, I start seeing around that in particular, around were you there for me, I start seeing people tear up a little bit. It's very common, um, which shows you that's where a lot of hurt can show up. But really, let's say couples come to see me and the trust is broken. There can be a little crack in that trust ball or it can be completely destroyed by, for example, uh, an ongoing affair that's been going on for a year. Um, it can also be through uh, gambling addictions and, and alcohol addictions, things that have been hidden, uh, many different reasons trust can be broken. But it's not the case that if a couple's trust has been broken that automatically they should split up. What actually is the most important thing on that house is the other wall, which is the commitment wall. And commitment really is what is the level of desire on both people to try and make their relationship work. Because if you've got that, if you've even got a little bit of a spark or a little bit of hope, then you can rebuild the rest of your house. Um, so let's say there is that. You do have that spark um, to at least go, you know what, there's a lot at stake. Maybe there's kids involved or whatever it is. We're not willing to throw the towel in just yet. Then you, you can rebuild the rest of this house. Now, the first three levels of your house is really about your friendship and your connection. The first level is called love maps. And what are love maps? Really, it's how well do you really know your partner's world? And so how do you get to know anybody? Uh, you basically need to be able to ask 
questions, open questions. So things like, where did you grow up? What was that like for you? What was it like in your family? What's your favorite food, your favorite music? We do this very naturally when we start dating somebody. But what happens is very quickly we move into a relationship where we talk about how was your day and what's for dinner and um, maybe tomorrow in the future, but we don't keep getting to know the other person. Um, so also, depending on what stage of life you've met each other, um, you might have a lot that you could share from your past. And sharing things about ourselves intimately actually is what bonds people together and makes them feel close to each other. The other thing that happens with the love maps is as you spend a year together, 5, 10, 15, 20, if you don't update the map as you go, because people do change, so your needs can change, what you want from your life can change, your career goals can change. There's many things that can shift while you're in a relationship. And if you're not keeping up to date with each other and sharing that, that's when you start to drift apart. So Love Maps helps you to avoid that happening. The next level of the house was called Fondness and Admiration. So sharing fondness and admiration is a very important um, reciprocal cycle thing that has to happen between two people. Now fondness is, do we like each other? Do we enjoy each other's company? Um, can we go out and, and have fun together? Are we affectionate verbally and physically? Um, admiration is a really interesting one because when people hear the word admiration, and it also comes up in a needs question I give couples, um, they go, oh, I don't need admiration. You don't, you know, and it's not that. It's not an ego based, you need to tell me that I'm wonderful. It's actually more if you change the words to, to feel appreciated and to feel valued. And so there is a little bit of admiration that shows up that is important. Like we need to kind of respect our partner and look at some of the things they do and who they are and go, I really like my partner and I actually admire some of the things they do and the things that they're about. So that's a critical thing. The next level up in terms of friendship and connection, and recently John Gottman came out and said, turning towards versus turning away from each other is probably the most important thing in your relationship house. And really what that is, it's about bids for connection. So it could be a verbal bid, it could be a physical bid. A verbal bid for connection is, hey honey, I wanna tell you about what happened to me today. Right, And let's say your partner is not listening, or they say not now, or they're on their phone and they're not really present. It's called a failed bid to connect. Um, physically, obviously, could be hold my hand, I want a hug, initiating sex, and it's like, no, not tonight, or I don't want to. Another failed bid to connect. Now, we'll keep trying to connect with our partner, but eventually we start pulling away, and that's when we're turning away from each other instead of towards each other. Um, and the walls are going up. The next level up on your house is called the positive perspective. Now, this is a really interesting one. This is what I call basically, what is the day-to-day -day emotional climate of your relationship? So, for example, if everything's been going well and when you think about your relationship, you generally feel good and you have an argument, it's not a big deal. However, if you've been having a lot of arguing and there's negativity showing up in your relationship, you move into the space that John calls negative sentiment override, which means you don't really know this consciously, but every day when you wake up, you're starting in a negative territory. So that's when you start arguing about the small stuff and things are just blowing up everywhere. You can't take a joke that your partner said. Um, it's just you take things the wrong way. You're just in this really negative space and you know you're in negative sentiment when your arguments are increasing in intensity and in frequency. Uh, and you're literally going, uh, we don't even know what we fight about. It's stupid things that set us off. That's negative sentiment. The next part of your relationship house that is critical, obviously, is conflict management. And that is most of the work that I do with my couples, is teaching them how to resolve their gridlocks and things that they feel stuck on, that can't, that can't seem to solve. And the other one is, learning from your arguments, which is called the aftermath of a fight, and also processing the past if you're still holding on to something. Towards the top of your house, towards the roof, we have um, make life dreams come true. And really that is, are you cheerleaders for each other in life? 
Do you support each other's dreams, goals, aspirations? Um, and also, as a couple, are you heading in the same direction? Do you want the same things? I call this the logistics because too many couples don't really talk about these things because we really like each other and we're attracted and all that, but then they're not talking about the things that could potentially cause a problem down the road. And that might be how many children, do you want children? How many children do you want? Do you want to live in another country? Do you want to change careers? Um, many different things that you need to kind of be on the same page with. The last thing is called creating shared meaning, and that's about values. So values can be around religious aspects that people want to bring into their home. It could be traditions as simple as, you know, when we were growing up, we'd sit around the dinner table every night, talk about our days, and we connected every day. And I want to bring that into the home. But it could also be just basic meaning. What do things mean to us? So what does money mean to us? What does freedom mean? What does adventure mean? What does family mean to us as well? And you don't have to have the same values, but you certainly need to understand each other's values and then be able to honor those values. So basically, you'll notice that in terms of the relationship house, I didn't mention the word intimacy or sex. So we know that if all the pillars or if everything in your house is going well, the intimacy should be going well, unless sex is an issue in itself, and that's a whole other subject. However, we know also that if things are breaking down in your house, the intimacy is usually the first thing to go. And it's always a sign that something's not working. So I hope you've enjoyed this description of the relationship house. If you do want uh, a copy of it, feel free to email me, um, contact me through the website, and I'll send you a copy of the relationship house.